Hi, good afternoon. Welcome here to our studios in downtown Rochester. We are talking sports with Val today. How are you, Val? Wow, big week at Butler, was it not? Thad Mata is the new men's basketball coach. Right. And just today... The new old men's basketball coach. Yeah, the new old men's basketball coach back for a second stint. And the new women's basketball coach is Austin Parkinson, who moves over from IUPUI. Oh, I hadn't to, heard that. to take over the Butler job. Just hired today, and it's... Boy, a big week at Butler. Those are big splash hires, I think, within the state. That's yeah. going to raise some eyebrows. Yeah, Austin Parkinson had done some really good things over at IUPUI over the last, uh, I don't know, he was there, what, eight years maybe? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, wow, I hadn't heard that one, so that's, mm -hmm. that is big news. Yeah. So, should be interesting to see how that all plays out. And what, what we're dealing with here uh, is a lot of uh, our typical spring weather. Basketball's right? still on the mind because we're not, we're not in the mind <laughs> for outdoor sports at this point. It's <laughs> we just got some more uh, notifications right before the show started about some more uh, cancellations. Pretty much everything, I guess. Pretty much everything point. over the weekend, yeah. The Rochester three-way home doubleheader against uh, Rochester softball three-way home doubleheader against Pioneer and Carroll. Scheduled for Saturday has been canceled. The Rochester John Glenn baseball doubleheader uh, at Rochester has been canceled. The JV doubleheader between Rochester and John Glenn at John Glenn has been canceled. The Rochester Invitational Boys Golf Tournament has been canceled. Rochester and Valley were scheduled to play in that. The, Ro the uh, John Glenn Invitational Girls Tennis Tournament has been canceled. Rochester was scheduled to play in that. Uh, the Rochester Northwestern Baseball Games scheduled for today has been canceled. The John Glenn cast and softball game scheduled for today has been canceled. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been, I think, or, excuse me, postponed until May 7th. The uh, Manchester cast and baseball doubleheader scheduled for Saturday has been uh, modified. Uh, they won't play at all tomorrow. They'll play one game on Monday. Mm hmm so yeah, it's a lot of stuff. I know. Right, uh, and the, and the, uh, the I think the Knox cast and softball game, which was scheduled for Thursday, that's been I think uh, scheduled for. Uh, I think that's going to be May seventh. The John Glenn, I think, excuse me, I think. Make sure I get my facts right. The Knox cast and softball game is May seventh. The John Glenn cast and softball game uh, has not been rescheduled yet and might not be at all. Right, right. Knox obviously, yeah. Conference get, opponent, right? Got to so, get that one. But get, get that one in. So. Rescheduled somehow. Uh, there was a pretty pretty sizable golf tournament that Triton was hosting as well. That Pioneer, I think, was playing in. Right. That's right. been canceled. It was supposed to be at the Woodbury Golf Course in Plymouth, and that's been canceled already. Scheduled for Saturday. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of stuff being canceled, but uh, you know we're we're here and we're dry, and we're we're going to talk some sports today, and we are going to talk a lot of our spring sports. Get a little preview for you of uh, those sports uh, sounds like maybe next week we're going to get you know into a little bit more uh, favorable weather conditions hopefully I mean it is Indiana and it is spring and this is the kind of thing that happens and you know it, it's it's a thing that happens every year and we become we, Seattle for a month <laughs> yeah yeah we just deal with it and, and hope that the old saying you know about the Mayflowers is true mm -hmm. and we'll uh, we'll be looking forward to some really good ones this year because the the rain is uh, definitely uh, been pretty heavy here in April. So without further ado, let's uh, get into a little bit of those spring sports and let's start with our girls tennis and you know some of these uh, you know we don't we don't have a whole lot of uh, knowledge of yet but um, you know I, I know the the thing that I've heard from both Valley and Rochester is they've got some really good numbers this year. Yeah numbers is not the issue at either school. The issue I think is uh, developing the talent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Rochester's got a, a kid in Kylie Houston who might uh, move into that number one single spot, we think. We were kind of hoping to see what would happen this week. Remember, not only was the John Glenn invite, not only was that canceled, but Rochester was playing North Judson on Thursday night, and that got canceled. And that was kind of always an interesting one because those two teams are in the same sectional together. Um, but, uh, you know, there, it's kind of a mixture of uh, some... Uh, I mean, it's it's all across the grade level, but just not a whole lot of experience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Emily Hughes is another senior. I don't think she's played competitive tennis before, but she's come she's come out for tennis. So I'm I'm curious to see, um, you know, what this team's going to look like. But it's just too early to tell at this point. Yeah, I know uh, Ella McCarter's is looking pretty good as a freshman. Uh, you know, there's some mm -hmm. there's some history there with the McCarter's in tennis, and right. you know, they they've played a lot of tennis. You know, as a family, so. Um, From what we hear, Riley Clevenger is going to be competing for a varsity spot, so that's another name to kind of throw in the mix. Okay. 
And uh, it sounds like Valley has some uh, pretty good numbers as well. Right, new coach, Emily Ackerman. And if that, if Emily, the name Emily Ackerman doesn't ring a bell, the name Emily, her maiden name might ring a bell. She's the former Emily Mast. And she was a terrific player at Fairfield High School. And she was a terrific player at Grace College. And she is very young, very dynamic. And, you know, really, and she, and I talked with her at uh, the Valley uh, Spring, Spring Sports Photos Day. And, um, you know, definitely teaching a lot of fundamentals, a lot of newcomers in this program. Uh, and just because, uh, you know, they, they suffered pretty heavy graduation losses, but a first-year coach, in fact, I mean, she's so young that her younger sister is a, the senior number one player on Fairfield's mm -hmm. team. So there have been a lot of masks who've gone through Fairfield over yeah. the years, and yeah. Emily was just, a, I mean, she was an, I think she was an all-state player at Fairfield and then became, an, I think she was an all-conference player at Grace College. So, mm -hmm. I mean, her 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 resume is just outstanding. But she's, she's a young coach, and she's brought a lot of, enthusiasm in that program. Know that name well from uh, some of the town and country stuff that we did a few years ago. There was uh, some really good players from uh, Fairfield mm -hmm. that were, uh, last name were, was Mast. So mm -hmm. um, big, big time name up in the Fairfield uh, Goshen area. Right. Sure. So again, Valley has been on spring break this week. They, I guess it was smart to hold spring break this week with the yeah. weather being as Fair bad breaks. as it was, but they'll They'll open things up next next week, and I think we'll, we'll be able to kind of tell a lot more in terms of how things shake out, who plays singles, who plays doubles, when we come back next week. Yeah, they didn't really miss out on a whole lot of stuff because everything pretty much ended up getting canceled. So yeah, um, so that's uh, that's the only two teams, right? We don't have anybody else that has well, the only two teams in our area that have girls yeah. tennis. So. Um, and then the other thing uh, you said, you know, uh, boys golf, we had a lot of kids graduate last year, especially Rochester, you know, with Reese Reaney kind of leading the way last right. year. I mean, Reese Reaney and Wade Schaefer, I mean, those are two big losses. But, the, you know, the next three are, are back when you talk about Dryden Vance and Drew Strasser and, you know, J.R. McLaughlin, he's fun to watch. He's not very big, but he hits the ball a long way. And, you know, he'll, he'll figure he'll be right probably in that number three spot. Now it's who's that four and five. I mean, you've got some unproven kids, you know, Wesley Meadows and Robert Bazo. We've seen them play other sports, but mm -hmm. we don't know much about them as golfers. Uh, you know, Brady Morgan has come out for golf, Enrique Navarro. But so I think it's going to be a lot of competition for those four and five spots at Rochester. Uh, when you talk about Valley, again, I, I'd say the same thing about Ben Shriver as I would say about Emily Ackerman, mm. a young coach who's going to be a lot of kids are going to want to play for him. He, the numbers are way up. Mm. He's got a, he can stock a full JV plus a full varsity. Uh, again, Greg Miller is just one of the best golfers in the area. He's one of those kids who we could be talking about him as a regional qualifier, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the TRC medalist mix. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he ran into Cash Beller last year <laughs> right. from Peru. But, I mean, Greg has played a lot of golf in his life, and he, he knows what he's doing on the golf course. He's just a complete player. But it's, and he's young, right? Just a sophomore. You're right. Yeah. right. He's played a lot of golf yeah. by Mega Long Way. It's, now, who fills out those other spots? We've seen saw kids like Nolan Cumberland and Brandon Hoffman come out for golf, but I don't know how much experience they have around the course. So, uh, you know, Ben Shriver's going to have a lot of decision-making to do in terms of putting together a lineup. Yeah, yeah. And some of the other area, you know, uh, Winnemac is always, uh, you know, pretty strong uh, over there. Coach Rodebaugh always does a great job. Coach Rodebush does a great job. And, of course, his son Jackson might think might figure in that number one spot. But you've got, you know, kids like Jaden Terry and Sean Pratt. They're both seniors. They played a lot of golf in, mm -hmm. in the past. And I think they'll, they'll figure it. They'll, they'll kind of move into those two and three spots. But it's, you know, last year was kind of kind of a disappointment, I imagine, for Coach Rodebush. I mean, the team finished seventh in the sectional. That team is usually, you know, right in the top three and oftentimes make regionals or, you know, three or four. Uh, I think they'll be, you know, obviously I think they'll be in the Hoosier North mix, but, of course, when you think about Hoosier North and boys golf, the first team that comes to mind is Triton. Mm -hmm. The Trojans are just year in, year out, a very, very good team. I mean, they they can play with the big boys. Can Winnemac figure it in the mix right below them? Mm -hmm. Um the other the other teams, uh, you know, Pioneer and Culver and, and Caston don't know. Pioneer has no seniors, and okay. I think five of the six kids who came out for golf are freshmen. Okay. So I don't know a whole lot there. We'll right. find out more about them. Uh, Culver, don't know a whole lot. I know, uh, uh, don't know a whole lot about them. We haven't gotten a roster yet. And then Caston, uh, they only have four kids who came out to play golf for Coach Evans, but it's enough for a team. 
Um, looking for a kid, you know, like Colby Pugh to maybe play a, uh, a big role. Uh, Bailey Zimpleman, we saw Bailey on the soccer field back during right. the fall. Uh, he is their only senior. Okay. So they only have, but they only have four. So. Right. The uh, you know that tournament going on that was supposed to happen tomorrow at Rochester that was going to be a big one. I think there was uh, what fourteen. Uh, plus yeah, teams at, usually at least fourteen, and sometimes sixteen, and sometimes even eighteen. Yeah. So that's they were, a, they, they, a were, big they were one to they lose. were doing the uh, they were doing everything to try to get that tournament in. They had pushed the start time back to ten thirty to mm. maybe melt off the course somehow, but yeah. it, I think they realized it just wasn't going to work. Well, I don't think it's you know it's not worth tearing up your course for the whole year, yeah, uh, just for one tournament. And if you know if it's as soggy as it is, that uh, you know it's just not worth it. And right. So, you know, the, and as I mentioned, the Hoosier North. I think when you look at Triton, they're probably the favorites in the Hoosier North going forward. The TRC that was a really really good Peru team that won it last year. Mm-hmm. Um, could be a little bit more wide open this year. Right. Right. Well, you lose the state champion for yeah. Peru, you know, and. I, I still just what he did in that uh, state championship meet it was just unbelievable. I mean, never been done. Uh, you know, winning by how many strokes did he end up winning by six? Seven? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, just just crazy what he did. And it's amazing we've had two have two individual state two individual reigning state champions from the TRC right now. When you talk about Cash Beller and Marshall Fishback in different sports, but still, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. And uh, you know, it's just it's been a really good year. Yeah, uh, you know the team that that's really been kind of uh, kind of lurking underneath has been Northfield. I think they've been pretty good in the past years. I think they've been kind of the best team out of Wabash County. Um, but yeah, it's it's really going to be hard. It's going to be hard to predict in terms of how these lineups. I think Rochester could be in the mix just because I know how dedicated Coach Bailey is to the to those kids and how much time he spends with them out on the course and probably in the gym as well. I, Again, Rochester's pretty solid with those three. When he, but you know, Dryden Vance is a kid who's he's so talented. But it's okay. He's going to be the number one kid now. So how, how will he adjust to that? Right, right. It's a little but, bit I mean, different position. But sure. yeah, I mean, and, and you know, Drew Strasser, he's a kid who, you know, he real he realizes, you know, I'm not the biggest kid, but that can't prevent me from being a good putter mm-hmm. or having a good short game. Right, right. Well, and yeah, that's a that's a big chunk of uh, what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least it always has been for me because that's where I always take the most strokes. And yeah. If you're not uh, very good at it, it's tough. So. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Coach Bailey is one who really teaches like the the you know kind of the mental side of the game as well as the physical side. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't you know I Rochester has such a great tradition in golf over the years. I I wouldn't I I wouldn't downplay their chances too too early. Mm-hmm. Well, eventually, I think they'll be able to get out on the course and and get some uh, some matches in, and and we'll uh, kind of get a little better feel right. for what's going on. That's always been <laughs> that's always been part of the deal if you're right. if you're a golfer. Right. Yep. It's uh, it is part of the spring sports. That's mm-hmm. uh, what we have to deal. Learn with. Learn how to play with wearing layers, mm-hmm. maybe even wearing gloves. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a little bit of a quick break here, and we'll come back and we'll talk some track, both boys and girls track, when we get back here on Talking Sports. Hello, I'm Harry Webb of Webb's Family Pharmacy. Were you one of nearly 7,000 patients we served last year? If not, I'd like to invite you to check out our locally owned pharmacies. Transferring your business is easy to do. Just one call and we'll take it from there. While our competitive prices are important, our success comes from our knowledgeable and compassionate staff. Make Webb's Family Pharmacy your pharmacy. Just one call and we'll take it from there. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and as we move into uh, boys and girls track, Val, um, we've got a little bit better feel for some of the uh, area teams because of uh, some indoor stuff that they were able to do. Um, you know, Rochester Valley Pioneer, I know, uh, all competed in indoor meets at Purdue right. and IU. So, uh, and then they've had a few uh, right. outdoor meets. Right. Valley also had an indoor meet at Trine earlier in the year. That's when. Dawson Perkins went six seven in the high jump and broke the forty two year old forty three forty three year old school record set in nineteen seventy nine. Wow, and he he was really close to that last year, right? I think he was getting around he was, six six. Yeah, he was six six at state last year, and he did yeah. six seven in an indoor meet at, at the indoor meet at Trine. So, 
So that just uh, makes you think that you know, as the year goes on and the weather gets better, that uh, that it's, may be a, a record that he breaks you know, it, his own record. It's only wet people's appetite and, and increased anticipation for this season. I mean, I think Dawson finished seventh at state last year, and I believe four of the six who finished ahead of them who finished ahead of him graduated. Yeah. So there, I mean, he, you know, there's a kid from Evansville who's really good, but I mean, there. I mean, the sky, truly, the sky's the limit. Literally, the sky's the limit for Dawson. He's, he's off to a great start. He, you know, he jumped, he jumped six six in a downpour at, at in a meet at Northwood outdoors. So I mean, he, you know, he did six three at indoor state, then six six at, at Northwood. So, I mean, Dawson is is a unique. He's a unique athlete at six. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's six feet seven inches tall. He's, you know, he's played a lot of basketball in the past, and he's going. IU East has obviously seen something in in him already because he's headed down there for his college track. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that'd be interesting to to see too because we, you know, we were talking about uh, Ezra Llewellyn last year that was going to go to IU Kokomo, and, and yeah. you know, he just happened to win the hundred in the state. And mm-hmm. next thing you know, he's uh, he's competing at Purdue. Yeah, Ted. So if he ends up at IU East, that's great. But uh, you know, there there may be some changes that happen there. But, yeah. So he's got a, a teammate that's doing really well in the early season as well in the uh, shot put with uh, Wade Melanson. Yeah, I mean, Wade Melanson threw the shot put, I think, 51 4 at an outdoor meet at Northwood, again, in a rainstorm. Mm. Uh, you know, Wade finished sixth at Indoor State in the shot. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Wade is, you know, he he's a little bit better at the shot than he is at the discus, but he's going to be formidable in both events. Yeah. My daughter saw Wade up on the, uh, on the stand there at IU, mm. and she's like, why is there a coach on the stand? I said, that's not a coach, honey. That's that's uh, one of their uh, throwers. And yeah. She uh, she wasn't believing me with that. But uh, <laughs> the uh, the one that was right above him there on the stand at IU, placed fourth, was uh, our wrestling state champion from Rochester. Right, Marshall Fishback. He's he's thrown in. He's already gone over fifty feet indoors during indoor season. He had never done that outdoors. Uh, and then he threw it. Uh, I think forty nine. 10 in that first outdoor meet against Plymouth uh, last Friday. Unfortunately, Rochester, uh, they had a road meet at John Glenn scheduled for Thursday that got canceled due to the weather. So, And it was it was pushing about 30 degrees on Friday, too. Yeah, right? so again, yeah, that, what, that he did that in bad weather is, is a really good sign. And he, mm-hmm. again, top five in the state in indoors. Again, you know, Ron Schaefer is the assistant coach in charge of the throwers. And... Uh, you know he he's he's worked wonders because when you look on the girls' side, Kennedy Jackson was second at indoor state right. in the shot put. She threw, I think she threw a thirty-seven, eleven and three quarters. That throw would get you a in I think around I mean, it would get you about sixth at the regional uh, from last year. But the the third place throw was right around thirty-eight six. So she doesn't have a whole lot f- farther to throw to get in that possible state mix right and it's so early in the season that you would think that she's just going to get better, and better right right i mean obviously and i mean that 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 regional you know is just a very tough regional the regional was at goshen last year will be at kokomo this year but you know i mean avery parker from lewis cass who i think was second at state last year and she she came out of that section or she came out of that regional last year so it's it's pretty tough competition uh i'm looking forward to that meet on may 3rd uh, when it'll be Rochester Valley and Triton at Triton, and it'll be Kennedy Jackson, and then you've got from Valley Mallory Durkis, who's a very good thrower, mm-hmm. maybe not at Kennedy's level, but a very good thrower, and then at Triton, the very talented sophomore Addison Beers. I mean, she is also kind of at that state level in the shot put. Is she okay? Yeah. So uh, let's just stay in Rochester. So that's that's kind of the throwing. Uh, yeah. Just kind of the throwing standpoint, but yeah, we've got a lot of. T- the Rochester girls and boys teams are just really top to bottom good track teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they kind of check all the boxes, so to speak. I mean, if you look at the Rochester girls team, obviously they're going to miss Cami Burkett a lot mm-hmm. due to that knee. But you know, Kenzie Bradley is one of the top sprinters in the area in both the 100 and the 200. Uh, she was dealing with a little hamstring tightness uh, last week when we saw her, so she didn't run against Plymouth. But the coach said that Coach Reinhardt said that that was our call. Uh, she said she could have, but we weren't going to risk it in 42 degree weather. Right. But Kenzie is the defending TRC champ in the 100. Um, she'll be right there in the 200 as well. She is really a 
somebody who puts a lot of time and she's a real te great technical sprinter and she's worked so hard at that in terms of I mean she's always been fast but improving her technical sprinting and and being able to hold up in that 200 running the curve well and staying strong she's really put a lot of work into that and she, you know she's you know she's a great sprinter and then you've got uh, you know they've got a terrific hurdler in Macy Nelson who also does the pole vault and then of course the distance crew is just top notch mm -hmm. um, both Madeline Calloway and Zoe Seward made regionals in the 3200 last year. Madeline actually made state in the 3200. Uh, I think Zoe was like fifth at the regional in the 3200. I mean, she was, she's right there. Zoe is basically running the same time this year that she was at the end of last year, right around 12 minutes. Um, Madeline's gone, Madeline went 11:55 indoors. She was ninth at indoor state. Zoe was 11th at indoor state. So that, you know, those two they they push each other mm -hmm. in in a good way. You know, we saw them run against Plymouth last week. You could tell they were pacing. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, you could just tell right away that they just weren't. They were told, run run at 88% of your max, which I don't understand yeah. what that means. But, yeah, I mean, you could tell that they were yeah. reining it in a little bit. And then that 4 by 8 relay is going to be really good when you throw in Elena Bodie and Araceli Ochoa to those two. Right. So it's a 4 by 8 relay that will be very formidable uh, yeah. when we get to the postseason. And then we we, you know, we mentioned Kennedy Jackson and the throws and Macy. Uh, obviously, the one concern is the are the jumps, the long jump and the high jump, because those were Cammy's events. Yeah, uh, we'll see if they we'll see if Kenzie Bradley once she gets healthy if she can do maybe some, maybe the long jump. I don't know if she has much experience in the high jump. Yeah, you know if you you know it was my first experience to a, a big indoor meet. The the thirty two hundred on the indoor track is uh, you know. A lot of turns, because <laughs> mm -hmm. that is a, a lot of laps, because you're going 200 at a time versus 400. So, you know, you're you're looking at 16 laps in that. So, mm -hmm. that, it'd be a tough one to run. Yeah, that, that it was a really fast indoor state meet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the winning time was like 10. Was it 10:20? I mean, it was. Yeah, I think it was. A girl from it was, uh, was a Brabuff Jesuit who won it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, it, it's got to be a little disheartening too, because you know. If you're if you're a Madeline Callaway or you know uh, you know some of those better runners that you're used to being right up front and you're getting lapped because it's only right. a 200 meter track mm -hmm. and then you know you're you're a lap down when when the girl finishes that's got to be a little disheartening but you still ran you know like Violet Montgomery from Pioneer ran a PR by like 30 seconds and I think she was uh, a lap and a half down right from the winner right. Uh, you, you look at the boys uh, the Rochester boys team this is you know they're the defending trc champs they were second at last year's sectional and if anything they're a better team this year mm -hmm. you know they they add a kid in alex deming and that that's really he i mean he he ran a 55.2 in the four open 400 and not only that but he runs the anchor leg in the four by 400 relay that that's saying a lot that here's a sophomore who hasn't run track since he was in the sixth grade and they're trusting him in the anchor leg in that four by four relay and right out of the gate, running under you know sub one minute. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's in the fifty fives. Yeah, and that you know that those the the four by one relay we saw at Rochester against Plymouth last week. They got DQ'd for a baton pass out of the uh, legal zone, mm -hmm. but had it counted, I mean they would have run forty six flat. And I can't ever again forty six flat in cold weather. I can't ever remember Rochester being that fast at this time of the year. Now. Valley's looking at that and saying, oh, yeah, because <laughs> they've got, I mean, I saw Valley run 45.3 in the rain at Northwood mm -hmm. with Wade Jones, Nathan Parker, Rex Kirkenstein, and uh, Caleb Petkin. Mm -hmm. So, and then Manchester's looking at Valley and Rochester saying, oh, yeah, I mean, because <laughs> they're going to be really tough in that event, too. Yeah. So that 4 by one relay at conference is going to be a really interesting race. And, of course, they're also in the in that Plymouth sectional. So, yeah. Uh, but the four Rochester four by one relay and Rochester's four by four relays are going to be really good because then I, I don't think um, Zach Pickens will run the four by one relay, but he will run the four by four. Right. Uh, and that, that'll be a you know I think Rochester will be pretty tough in that four by four relay as mm -hmm. well. I think Braxton Mencius is a kid who's you know he's a kid who's just he can do a little bit of everything. I mean he's he can do the long jump. I mean he he's long jumped I think eighteen six already. Uh, again, in cold weather, can he get further than that? Obviously, if, he, if you're serious about making 
Uh, regionals in the long jump. He probably got to get into the 19s, but can he get there? We'll see that. But Braxton, he looked really good when we saw him last week, and and, he, and he'll be a mix in the relay. Rochester, I can't ever remember a Rochester boys track team with so much depth in the in the sprints. You know, we've always known they have depth in the distance events, right. but it's the sprints where they have that depth. And that Rochester 4x8 team, boy, it's it's a really good team. I mean, when you talk about Peyton Hyatt and and, and R.J. Karenko and and Chris Rohr, and uh, probably Dylan Steininger will probably get that fourth spot, but I'm sure his brother Wes would maybe like that spot as well. But, I mean, you know, Rochester think, was second in the sectional in the 4 by 8 relay last year, finished like this close right behind a CMA team that's always strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll be wanting to win that race this year. Yeah. And they'll be heavily favored in the conference in that event. Right. So uh, and, and then and then Chris, and Chris Rohr looked great, by the way, in the the mile and the two mile. I mean, he is he is really strong. Regional qualifier last year in the two mile. Uh, I think you know he looks he's faster now than he was one year ago at this time. Obviously, if he wants to make state in the two mile, which is probably his better event, probably gonna have to get under ten thirty. Mm-hmm. Uh, but of course, he, if he needs advice, he just makes a phone call to his brother, right? Because Tommy, you know, made state in the two mile as well. Yeah. Well, just the tradition of uh, distance running in Rochester over the years. I mean, it's just crazy how good it's been. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a fun track season. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about Valley. With, right. And we uh, should we should mention Dustin Seibert, too in the pole vault. Uh-huh. He pole vaulted to twelve feet at that West Lafayette meet. Yeah. Only went ten to get to indoor state. Then only went ten six at indoor state. But well, if he can consistently get in the twelves. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be a factor. I, now, obviously, if you want to make state, you probably got to get into the 13s or maybe even the 14s. Yeah. But, I mean, Dustin is, again, he's further along now than he was one year ago at this time. And it's a senior It's a senior year, so yeah. we'll see how he does. Yeah, it was crazy at that Purdue meet. The, uh, not the indoor state qualifier, but the, uh, the one that we went to before that, Hobart. Uh, has a kid that was uh, over 16. Mm-hmm. That was just crazy. His brother, I think, won state last year at 16-6, I think they said. Mm-hmm. And his dad was an All-American uh, vaulter at Purdue. So um, I've never I've never been live and, and saw a kid mm-hmm. jump 16 before. And it, it's crazy to see because, mm-hmm. you know, the poles may be, what, 12 feet, the longer poles. Uh-huh. So to to see a kid go another four feet over the pole was is pretty neat. Yeah, and to to think that there's what another six feet mm-hmm. to the world record from that. Yeah. so it's just crazy. On the girls' side, we should mention McKenna Jackson. Who I think has already gone seven feet. Yeah, and uh, you know I think made did think she made it to indoor state. Uh, she's Kennedy Jackson's cousin, so mm-hmm. McKenna will be. Okay. Uh, and then makes and being, I think she'll be able to score points consistently for the Lady Zebras. We right. should also mention another another kid we need to give a shout out on the Rochester boys side is Caden Towell. He looked great in the 110 hurdles and the 300 hurdles, and apparently he's we didn't see, I think he only high jumped five two, but I think they're confident that he's going to get up there in the high jump as well. Obviously he's maybe not at Dawson's level, but boy Caden he you know he it, it was interesting. I was talking with Ryan Helt and he talked about he he that Caden just went up to him in practice one day and said, Coach, the three-step is clicking. Mm-hmm. I, I just I figured it out. I just have. And he's not the first person I've heard say that before. Where, where some, you know, some kids, it just takes them a while to figure it out. But he figured it out. He was great. He's he's way faster than he was last year at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, he's faster than he was. I mean, he, he looked great at that Plymouth Outdoor meet. Um, he's, he's like a full second faster in the 110 than he was a year ago at this time. So... He's going to be a kid who I think is going to be right in the mix. Obviously, Manchester always has good hurlers, so he's going to be right. You know, he's but he's going to be in that mix in that conference one ten and even in the three hundred because his stride doesn't break down in the three hundred either. Mm-hmm. But he, he just said the three the three step method just he figured it out. Yeah, and again you've got Alicia Walkman, you know teaches coach I know helps out with the hurdlers and, and Ryan Helton knows a lot about hurdles as well. So he's got he's got definitely got good coaching, but he just he just said he just figured it out. Yeah. And we and we talked to another kid. I want to give a shout out is Jared Regan, who he's going to uh, IU Kokomo for track, and he looked great in the in sprints. He he ran a great 100 the other day. Yeah, should be a really good uh, year for uh, the TRC uh, teams. It sounds like uh, you know Valley and Rochester both starting off strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I, I think again Rochester they check all the boxes. I don't you know Valley, 
you know, they don't have maybe the distance running that Rochester does. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Valley will get a ton of points in the field events, but will they get, you know, those those distance events yeah. seem to be kind of their bugaboo, so to speak. With Valley, uh, the Valley girls team, um, again, just a lot of young kids. I mean, Ava Smith is a sophomore, but only in her second year running track. And then you've got some, fre- you know, some really talented young freshmen. You're talking about Lydia Craig, Emma Patrick, uh, Avery Wagner. Mm-hmm. I mean, just a lot of young. Uh, Carly Snyder, we saw her in the basketball court. She's just made for the hurdles, but it's just, and she's, you know, she's she's going to be a good um, high jumper as well. It's just how long will it take for these girls to ad- adapt to varsity track? Because I was talking with Jenny Moriarty, and she goes. Yeah, it, this is not middle school track. It's different. I mean, right. I mean, uh, middle school track. If it's a little drizzle, and they say, "Yeah, let's cancel the meet." Mm-hmm. Uh, varsity track. If it's a little drizzle, no, you're you're going. Right, right. Yeah, and I found just, that out the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, so. But I mean, a lot of good young good good young athletes on the valley team, and I think the numbers are number situation is a little bit better. And of course, Chesney Miller and the distance events, and in the long jump. Uh, you know, Chesney's already gone. I think like fifteen six in the long jump. So a really good, a really good start for her, um, you know. I mean, she, and she, I think she made indoor state in the thirty in the two mile as well in that same race with Zoe Seward and Madeline Calloway and Violet Montgomery. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I think Chesney's poised for a big year. Yeah. So, what about our uh, our other teams from the HNAC area? What uh, what have you seen, and what do you know about them? Well, I think Caston. You know, I, I think they've got you know. You talk about Emma Stinson, you know, senior in the hurdles, and you know she's probably the most experienced girl they have. Um, and then they're going to have some distance runners. Um, you know, will we see Delaney Strasser and Mackenzie Radebush out there? Um, with the cast and boys, you know, Brady Evans. I know he, he had a leg injury. You know, a great hurdler, but I know he had a leg injury during basketball season, so his health, I think, is going to be key. Uh, but then you know the, the distance runners when you talk about Austin Dagg and Edison Byram. I mean, they'll. Right, Caston will pick up a lot of points in each meet from their distance kids, mm-hmm. uh, but you know they, they they lose they lose a really good thrower in Kobe Martindale to graduation. Kobe's maybe not on that that Melanson fishback level of throwers, but he, I mean he was a good he was good. I mean he was right there, right in that maybe notch below them. So mm-hmm. how will they replace him in the throwing events? Mm-hmm. But you know Coach Evans and you know Mark Evans is the track coach. He works with uh, with. Blair. With Blair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, I mean, they'll be a quality team. Uh, obviously, the big question in the Hoosier North boys is, okay, now that the Llewellyn brothers are graduated, who's going to win this thing? Right. Yeah, they kind of uh, dominated a little bit, you could right. say, over the last few years. Yeah. So. Uh, Culver, again, um, I'm curious to see, you know, new coach Reed Brace. Don't know much about him. Um you know they, they've always been you know good in the throwing events, but that was Coach Hollenbaugh. He's not there anymore. So will they continue to get points on the throwing events? Will they get some sprinters out? I mean, it's always been kind of a number situation. But boy, when they get the numbers out, they've had good teams at Culver, mm-hmm. and they've been able to 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 move on some kids. So that'll be cur- I'll be curious about that. Uh, the team that we always never know a whole lot about is Winnemac, just because they're in that other sectional and they we don't see them a whole lot, but. Uh, you know they're they're a program that's been consistently good over many years in track. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just you know, Coach Capus works with the boys, and then Coach Bennett works with the girls. We know that you know they should get quite a few points, especially on the girls' side from their distance crew. Um, but it's uh, don't know a whole lot about them yet. Mm-hmm. All right, any other track notes you want to go over? I'm going to ask you about Pioneer Track. Oh, you're going to ask me about Pioneer they, Track. They, yeah. You've seen them. They appear to be really young. I kind of wanted to know about their boys. It seems like they, they've got a lot of boys, distance runners, and that might be where they get the focus of their points this year as compared to the sprints, which they got from Ezra and Adai. Yeah, and then, I, I, on the I, girls' I, side, they're just loaded with freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, a young, young team on the girls' side. Uh, you know, you, you, you look at the girls, you look at, uh, obviously, Violet Montgomery for the mm-hmm. distance runners. Um, you know, and then you got uh, like Blair Grigsby, who's uh, mm-hmm. a really good kind of middle distance kind of runner. Um, you got some really good sprinters, the the twins, the Harding twins, yeah. uh, Michelle and Rochelle Harding. Uh, I think Michelle 
uh, has been, uh, she looked really good the other night in the uh, 200. Uh, they had Twin Lakes and Kankakee Valley. Mm -hmm. And she won that pretty pretty handily in that 200. And she looked really good in that. Um, boys, boys wise. Um, I, I think Mackenzie Rogers is going to have a really good year as well. She's a nice Along middle with, distance runner yeah. as well. She's she's running uh, the uh, 4x4, four, uh, 4x8. And then she also runs... I, the 400 mm -hmm. and uh, she she gets a nice i mean she's she's getting down around the minute in that 400 mm -hmm. so she she's doing well and um you know the the boys side of things uh, jackson baker and um baker's had a really good year yeah, he had a good year in cross country and i think he's con he continued it in indoor track season it sounds like he's gotten off to a good outdoor outdoor season as well yeah yeah he has he's been off to a good start and the um I'm forgetting his name right now. The other distance runner that's a freshman, Layton Dot. Layton Dot, yeah. Layton, um, he looked really good in that KB mm -hmm. Twin Lakes meet uh, in the uh, in the mile, and so uh, you know a couple a couple mm -hmm. of good runners. They've got some some sprinters um, that uh, look like they can compete. Um, you know, obviously not Ezra and Adai type of sprinters, but uh, I, I think I think they'll be a pretty good team. Mm -hmm. And there's some good numbers. I think there's 37 combined. Mm -hmm. 36, 37, so mm -hmm. they got some really good numbers. And, you know, you got some freshmen um, that are coming in, you know, like McKenna's first time that she's ever ran track. Mm -hmm. um, she's running some good times in the four and the eight, and, and she's clearing, you know, five, five, six last week in the pole vault. So, you know, for first time ever trying it, that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Kirsten Nye is, uh, she's doing yeah. hurdles, uh, looks pretty good uh, in, in the hurdle events, and uh, she's got a nice uh, run in the in the high jump as well. So. Yeah, just a lot of freshmen and sophomores on that yeah. on that girls team at Pioneer. Yeah, here. yeah. So yeah, I think if they can keep them uh, keep them going, keep them together, they uh, should be in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think Coach Montgomery on the boys' side at Pioneer is going to have a lot of flexibility for that distance. That you know who's going to run the eight hundred, who's going to run the 1600 who's gonna run the 3200 who's gonna mm -hmm. run the four by eight relay i think mm -hmm. she's gonna have some decisions to make some some good decisions some, right you know right where to, to maximize the points yeah 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 and there'll be some good competition within the team yeah for those spots and you know i've known her for a lot of years and her her and her husband and i are uh, really good friends and she really puts everything into it mm -hmm. you know she she puts a lot into it and really uh works with them and She's got a great group of uh, coaches there as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's what you know. Tracks a sport where you need a lot of coaching, and you need you need to trust your coaches a lot. It's because there's so many different disciplines, and and how the pieces of the puzzle fit is always it's it's interesting uh, how it kind of comes together. Yeah, yeah. Because there's there's so many different types of things that you're doing, but from you know from high jump to long jump to hurdles to discus to shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of different things you're working on, and there every one of them is you know completely night and day from the next one yeah so yeah we should mention pioneer the girls go to northwestern for their sectional this year yeah i think they went to western last year they go to northwestern this year okay and the boys sectionals at kokomo uh you know most of the teams in our area will go to bremen for their girls sectional to plymouth for their boys sectional i'm really curious to see if the rochester boys can ruffle the feathers of cma at that boys section I girls wise it's going to be hard i don't i don't know if they have the depth and again they lost to plymouth last week again hard to say because so early in the year and i madeline and zoe were both running kind of paced races but mm -hmm. boy plymouth has some good kids they've mm -hmm. got some really good girls kids uh but on the boys side can rochester can they bother cma a bit yeah. we'll see yeah and cma is you, we don't know a whole lot about them or who's going to show up or who they've got, but yeah. no CMA will be good. I mean, you know, they've got Tullis and the distance events who will he'll be right there with Chris Rohr and, you know, and, and Peyton Hyatt. But uh, can can Rochester win that boys sectional? It'd be interesting. They, they won it in two thousand five. They have not won a boys sectional since then, and the last sectional before two thousand five, nineteen forty nine. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a, just a little bit of a drought between sectionals. Right. So hopefully it's not going to be as long for the next one. Yeah. So I was at that 1949 section. Yeah. I was like, are they going to play boogie woogie bugle boy? <laughs> <laughs> just a young uh, again, pump right out of yeah, Ivy, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, boy, this is. Will this weather ever turn nice? I'm just. Mm. <laughs> 
All right. Well, anything else track wise you want to go over real quick? Um, I think that's it. I'm sure we're going to be talking about a lot more kids as the season comes on. Sure. And really, like, why didn't you talk about this kid or why didn't you talk about that kid? And I'm sure they'll, they'll come up and we'll talk about them in the future at some point. But we're just figuring stuff out for at the early part of the season. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully the uh, the weather will start going uh, the way it should, and right, cause that, that makes the times go down. Right, because that casting invite, which was scheduled for tomorrow, also that's that that got canceled back. I think two months ago. I didn't know if they had just had trouble finding teams to play to compete in that. But that was another meet that we we had kind of looked forward to because mm-hmm. I know casting's always in that. Winamax always in that. I think maybe even Pioneers done that, but that got canceled on the early going. So. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm sure there there, there going to be some kids we're going to be talking about that maybe we hadn't anticipated to talk about that much. But we'll, we'll be talking about that in future editions of this show. Yep, yep. We got plenty of time to talk more about track. So, we'll but take a, as you can tell, we've just talked about track for how long? I mean, I think we're pretty enthusiastic for this sport. I think, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, especially with Rochester kids, it just it's hard not to be enthusiastic when you you know. I don't know how many times I've told the story about, you know, going mm-hmm. out to uh, do testing at the football field in August and, you know, watching those track kids just going at it, you know, uh, and obviously cross country at the time. But they just they just have a love for the run. They, they love it, yeah. yeah. I mean, Jarrett Regan loves it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kenzie Bradley loves it. I mean, the, you know, and and you know, you're, you're seeing that with a lot of these kids. And they're, yeah. it's just not those two either. Right, right. So uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll uh, we'll talk some softball and some baseball and wrap it up here talking sports with Val for Friday afternoon. It's true value has everything you need to get your next project done. Located on 1619 Main Street in Rochester, Inyard's True Value provides a variety of tools and supplies from trusted brands such as DeWalt and Milwaukee to accomplish even the smallest of jobs. Call 574-223-4920 or visit www.truevaluecompany.com. Welcome back here, Talking Sports with Val. I'm Steve, he's Val. We are uh, moving into some softball talk and... um, you know, we were kind of hoping to be here tomorrow at uh, Fansler with a, uh, a nice little uh, three-way uh, game with Carroll coming to town, Pioneer was coming to town, and they were all going to play against the Rochester Zebras and each other. And, you know, really looking forward to, to that one. So, right. you know, uh, be a good test for uh, for Rochester to see where they're at against the defending 2A state champion Pioneer Panthers for sure. And we heard that Carroll was even much improved. Right, right. They, they did, uh, you know... Caston got them uh, last Friday in a, mm-hmm. in a win down there at Carroll, but it was a, much clo- it, even though it was ten nothing. Remember, it was like nineteen to one last year. Yeah. So I mean, from what we heard, Carroll they've got a I think a freshman pitcher who's kind of holding her own out there. Yeah. So uh, you know, let's talk Rochester because they've gotten yeah. off to home a, teams. Let's talk about them. Yeah, <laughs> they've they've gotten off to a really good start. Their bats have been hot. They they put up twenty five runs against Triton in their first game. Mm-hmm. They put up uh, another 16 runs in their uh, home opener last night against Plymouth. So, uh, you know, they've uh, they've started off with some uh, pretty big numbers on the run side. And they went about it in two different ways. Against Triton, they just kind of slugged their way to a win. I mean, 24 hits. They had, I think, I mean... In a I game. Mean, I mean, the box... That's crazy, yeah. Right, you, get the, you read the box score, and you just had to, like, d- do a double take. Like, is this box score correct? Right. I mean, Sidney Hawes goes 6 for 6 <laughs> with, two, with two home runs and three doubles... In a single, and Emma Howdeshell goes six for six and hits for the cycle with two singles and two doubles and a triple and a homer. She almost double cycled. Yeah, she almost. Yeah. I mean, she did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we saw we saw Joe Walker do it against Rochester last year. Maybe that gave him some ideas. But yeah, for Emma to do that in her first game back after a torn ACL, it's just remarkable. And not only that, not only that, two singles, two doubles, a triple homer, and she stole home. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. That's gutsy too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. so, um, and then, but some of the you know, and then Kylie Coleman had three hits and three RBIs, but then some of the younger kids have been coming on too. Keaton Doran, boy, she is so much improved. Yeah, and she's a really nice defensive outfielder as well. And her her speed and she's a good athlete out there. I mean, it doesn't take her a lot of strides to get to first base. Yeah, and then you had a really fast. Um, girl in left field and Dara Strasser. I oh, mean, yeah. She's really fast. Yeah. 
She batted leadoff against Triton. She batted in the number nine spot in the batting order against Plymouth, uh -huh. kind of moving around. And then Emma Sells, who batted ninth against Triton, she batted leadoff against Plymouth. So you've got to kind of almost got two leadoff hitters. And I mean, Emma, she's got that. I mean, she's tough. I mean, she's got a tiny strike zone for one thing, and she makes consistent contact. Yeah. And so both of them have uh, done some work in the circle too. Yeah. The pitching. Right. And then you've got a pitcher in Mia Hadashal. I think Mia's. Mia looks to be the ace. It looks like she's got a little more movement on her pitches. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, the first, it just, a little, you know, she needs to be a little more consistent and mm -hmm. just a little work a little more on the just. The, I think it's the conditioning. Maybe she looks like she get she got tired a little bit around the fifth inning, yeah, uh, last night against Plymouth. But just you know, you can so the the ball kind of died a little bit as it got to the plate. But well, I mean, she when does she gets, have a she does have a nine after her name too. Yeah, she's just a freshman. Yeah, she's a freshman. Yeah, but you can see the talent there. Yeah, and. Um, you know, Emma's, Emma plays a good shortstop. Uh, you've got a, you know, a nice freshman in Olivia Powell at first base who's uh, getting acclimated there. Kylie Coleman's playing third base. Hadn't played a whole lot of third base before. She goes, yeah, you know, you don't have much reaction time down there. The ball comes at you fast because right. Kylie's played a lot of shortstop in the past, a lot of outfield. It's played much third base before. Yeah, you're a little deeper at the short. Yeah, right. And then Callie Watson, you know, she's. You know she's she's played a lot of catcher in the past, and it's it's great to have a solid player there. Mm -hmm. And you know Emma Sells has played second base and has done a good job there. Sid Sydney Haas has played center field in the past, mm -hmm. and you got two speedy outfielders out there in Strasser in left field and Doran in right field. Uh, you know the the next big kind of question mark you hope to get answered is when will Maddie Heinzman be back? Right. I mean people forget how good Maddie was last year. She had three she had three twenty. Um, she's a really good, you know, like two strike, two out hitter, mm -hmm. which every every team kind of needs a girl like that. Um, they said they're kind of ramping her up. I think her knee injury was. We don't know a whole lot about Emma's knee injury as compared to Maddie's. So how do you compare the rehab times? But I think Maddie's was a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, they're they're taking it real really carefully with Maddie, but mm -hmm. uh, even focusing on. Hey, just if you can, even if you can just help us out on defense, that will really, that will really be key. Well, it's just amazing that uh, you know what they can do now. Is, mm -hmm. I mean, because this all happened in the you know early in the basketball season. Yeah. So you know the fact that we're even talking about them playing uh, you know softball is just crazy. Right. Those, their injuries were both five months ago. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy, but. You know, we saw we saw Maddie last year. I mean, she was playing great in the field. I mm -hmm. mean, like you said, if if they can get her out in the field, oh, she's a really good defensive center fielder yeah. or left fielder, or she can play third base. Yeah, they moved her in and played some third base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, it was funny talking with Becky Lee and we talking about Emma's rehab, and you know, the doctor said, you know, have her operate at fifty percent, and then. The next week, you know, move her up to maybe sixty percent. Mm -hmm. And with Emma, there's no such thing as fifty percent or sixty <laughs> yeah. percent. It was, we had a we had a stop, stop. You know, you're going right. to, you know, she she can't. Emma's just that's the way she is. She's right. just a fierce competitor. Right. But now to see Emma the way she is, I mean, you just wouldn't know. You wouldn't know if you didn't know already. And right. I mean, she, you know, she's seven for seven on the season. Yeah, yeah. Keaton Doran, by the way, is five for seven on the season. Yeah. Well, when you said that Emma was playing, I, I still, you know, that just kind of boggled my mind because I didn't expect her to be able to play at all. Yeah. You know, for softball, I was thinking, you know, maybe next year and, and get into that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's and again, amazing. Right, and, and they have veteran players who, okay, you might get them out the first time through the order, but can you get them out the second time? Right. Can you get them out the third time? And that's yeah, that speaks well for them. So they'll have a they'll have a big one, obviously, with the two games being canceled for tomorrow. They'll have a big one coming up on Tuesday with the uh, Winnemac Warriors coming. Right, up. Right, and I'm 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 really curious to see how they do against Winnemac. I mm -hmm. mean, that's you know a Winnemac team that's off to a little bit of a slow start. I, I imagine Ella Gearhart will pitch, but mm -hmm. uh, if she doesn't, then who does pitch? Or does Alexis Sheets maybe pitch? But I think Rochester now is okay. Let's see how they do against a little bit better comp competition from a pitching standpoint. Right. Can they hit better pitching than what they've seen so far? Right. But so far, I mean, they've just been they've just been clobbering the ball. Yeah. But also, but at the same time being patient. Yeah. Well, that's, that says a lot too. I mean, obviously, like you said, it's not been the greatest competition, but early season, cold weather, uh, to be hitting the ball like they are, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Right. And they were talking a lot about, hey, we practiced a lot outdoors. And they said, I mean, yesterday they were like, we practiced in weather worse than this. Mm-hmm. You know, we in the low. I mean, and then the funny thing is that, 
you know, Becky Lee asked the kids, hey, do you want to go indoors or outdoors? And they, they all want to go outdoors. Mm-hmm. And they think that that really, it's kind of kind of tough. It's, it's almost like it's toughened them up so they can handle the rough weather. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the other team that was going to be uh, up there tomorrow that uh, is one of the teams that we cover, obviously the uh, defending 2A state champion Pioneer Panthers and you know, you got to look at who they graduated. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously with uh, with Gottschall being the the main pitcher last year, you look at Joe Walker, who is you know has been a solid catcher for them for four years, and then you look at Madison Blickenstaff. But you, you also got to look at who you got back. I mean, when you start off a team with yeah. uh, Haley Kripe, I, I think you're gonna you're gonna have a pretty good building block. Well, she led the state in homers as a freshman. She led the state in homers as a junior, and she's hit three home runs in two games so far as a senior. And the only reason she didn't lead the state in home runs her sophomore year is because they didn't play. Yeah, because they didn't have a season. Um, and then on the you know in the circle, I mean, she had twelve strikeouts and a five inning. You know, they beat Logansport eleven to one in five innings on Thursday. That's a that's not a bad Logansport team at all. Right. And not only that, but that's a scrappy offensive Logansport team, and she had twelve strikeouts in that game. Mm-hmm. And that's a Logansport team that really gets the bat on the ball and really likes to. You know, likes to use their speed game. So to strike out twelve of their batters, that's that's saying something. Mm-hmm. So um, again, we haven't seen Pioneer use a second pitcher yet, so we're just guessing. Yeah. If, if who's going to be their number two? Or I mean, Haley's also the best defensive shortstop in the area, but she hasn't played it yet. Right. Um, but again, the, the, this 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 team is going to have plenty of senior leadership when you talk about Haley Kripe and when you talk about Kylie Ferris. And we talk about uh, Mackenzie Mackenzie Robinson. Mm-hmm. I mean, at catcher. I mean, that 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 that's what's going to help them through this kind of adjustment period. When you lose a Haley Gottschall and a Joe Walker and a Madison Blickenstaff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two two of them are playing uh, college softball, and the other one's playing college volleyball. Yeah, I mean, you know, just tra- transcendent type of athletes. And right uh, now, let's give a shout out to some of the new kids. Casey Webb, big home run last night against Logansport, yeah. and. Okay, it's now. Can they bring along those new kids? Bell right. Blick and staff is back and healthy. She had a home run last night. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this team is going to be again. You, they lost some power hitters, but they're going to be one of the better. I don't think anybody power that they hitting play teams is in the area. Feel sorry for them. Yeah, again, I don't think anybody's going to feel bad. Kinsey for Bird from Logansport is not a bad pitcher at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, that curveball she has is pretty wicked. But Pioneer took her deep four times last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they start off their uh, their season at two and zero uh, and. You know, yeah. like I said, they would have been up here tomorrow. And, it's canceled. And Addie Kripe is off to a really good start as yeah. well. And, yeah. you know, I, the, I'm really curious to see how this team plays defensively. They got off mm-hmm. to a little bit of a rough start, I think, against Faith Christian, but kind of tightened things up defensively. Again, for a, te- for a team that got a lot of strikeouts last year, they're a really, really good defensive team as well. I mean, yeah. they... But now you've got some kids in new positions, and let's see how that works out. Yeah. Well, just when you think, uh, you know, as an opponent that you're going to get rid of Haley Kripe, you know, when she graduates, you got Addie Kripe coming up. She's not quite Haley, but she's she's a very solid player as well. Mm-hmm. And, and they've got a cousin that's coming up too. That's uh, I think in seventh grade this year in Lois Layer. That she's going to be she's going to be something in the circle too. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's she's playing at a high level with the Gators organization, and uh, she's she was impressive last year, uh, junior high wise, playing sixth grade. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know. If you're an opponent and you're thinking, okay, we're gonna we're gonna have it free and clear after Haley graduates, yeah, no, maybe not. This pioneer program has been really, really good for. Oh like, yeah, I mean, even for, dec- for decades, Haley. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can remember, you know, back when Alyssa Shaw and mm-hmm. you know that group was in there, and uh, you know, Maddie, my oldest one at, at Argus, they were having a good year, and and Pioneer just smoked them. I mean, just mm-hmm. yeah, you know. So right, they Pioneer always finds a way to hit good pitching, mm-hmm. and they're. You know, they see a lot of it, too. You know, they've got yeah. a game against Harrison coming up, you know, mm-hmm. big 4A school. That's always a big powerhouse uh, program. Harrison's going to be really, I mean, they're really, really good. I think that was one of the teams that they lost to last year. Yeah, I mean. They, they lost early, kind of a weird one to Delphi, and then they lost to Harrison. And I think that was pretty much it. Wasn't right, it? I mean, Harrison, they might be the best team in Lafayette. I mean, in the Lafayette area, Lafayette, West Lafayette area, they're, they're going to be formidable. Yeah. So... Uh, some other teams, obviously, you know, Caston looking to have a really good year. They they kind of had a little hiccup there the other night at Logan Sport. Uh, you right. were there. What, what happened there with the? Well, they uh, were down. Comments? They were down five nothing, and you know, Addison Zippelman just got kind of dinked and dunked to death. I mean, just kind of like we mentioned that Logan Sport team. They they put their bat on the ball and they 
Um, it just seemed like a bunch of infield hits and bloop hits, and all of a sudden the it was the end of three innings, and Caston was down five nothing. But you know, Coach Burks, he, you know, he, you know, he's an intense competitor, but he also is a kid who trusts his kids a lot. And he just said, if they leave her in the third time through the order, we're going to get to her. And third time through the order is implemented. It's a two-run homer, and that was 5-2. to two. And the top of the seventh inning, you could see Kinsey Bird maybe just loses a little bit of steam on her pitches. You know, she gives up a couple hits, then strikes out a couple batters. And, you know, Macy Hinderleiter, I mean, just works a walk. That was just a great at-bat. I mean, and all of a sudden you get bases loaded, 5-2, to two, and Maddie Smith, now the, now the order flips, and it's 5-2. to two. And then Maddie Smith hits a pop-up, and it's like, well, game's over. And then they drop the pop-up and two runs score on the play. And then Maddie's trying for second, and she's going to get thrown out by a mile. And then the shortstop drops the ball, and Hinderleiter scores. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's 5-5, like, what? Right. What's going on here? And then, unfortunately, um, the next batter is Kinsey Molenkoff. She gets a base hit, but Maddie Smith gets thrown out of the plate, so it stays a tie game. And then Logan Sports scores going to even run in the bottom of the 7 to win 6-5. to five. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, but Mollenkopf did great up until that point. I think she held him scoreless for something like four innings mm -hmm. and allowed two hits and one walk, and she had five Ks. So, again, you know, with Coach, you know, again, with Kasten, it's, it's, I wouldn't even call it a one and a two with Simpleman and Mollenkopf. It's more like a one and a one A. Mm -hmm. And you've got Maddie, you know, I haven't, Maddie hit right handed exclusively against Logan Sport. I know she slapped some in the past, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think she gets a little more power from the right side, but. Again, that, that lineup is just so terrific. I mean, when you talk about, you know, Maddie, Mollenkoff, Zimpleman, and Scales. Yeah. One, two, three, four. I mean, that is just dangerous. Well, and outside of Maddie Smith, they're all very young as well. Right. Yeah. Right. It seems like we've known these girls forever. Right. Maddie's the only senior on the team. Right. And, you know, Zimpleman and Scales and, and Mollenkoff are all sophomores. Right. So... But we've talked about them, right. you know, obviously since since day one of volleyball. Season. Right, and again, I throw in Hinderleiter in that. I mean, sure. she. I mean, she's another one of those sophomores. Right, she. Mm -hmm. You know, she played. You know, she she hits in the ninth spot in that batting order. But I think she can almost hit anywhere in the batting order, and she can play almost anywhere on the field. She played shortstop when we saw her, and that's saying something because you know Maddie Smith is a girl who's played a lot of shortstop in the past. But Coach Brooks like Matt likes Maddie in center field, and if yeah. Hinderleiter can hold down shortstop. When either Zimpleman or Mollenkoff's on the on, in the circle, then, then that's going to be re a really nice benefit. And you know, Annie Harsh is, I mean, in her second year is the first baseman, and you know, whoever's playing second base is going to be good, whether it's Zimpleman or Mollenkoff. And then you've got a freshman in McKenna Middleton at third base who looks like, you know, she's going to be a pretty good player as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, despite that loss to Logan Sport, I mean, you know, Cass and they're they're going to be right there and. Right, they, 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 you they, talk about that right conference. Now, I mean, right. it's just crazy how good that it's conference a, it's, is going to be. It's an insane, it's an insanely good conference, and Caston has really beefed up their non-conference schedule as well. They right. have, I mean, it, it's now loaded, and there there were just some there were some games on their schedule last year. Well, let's be honest, if they showed up, they were going to win. Right, uh, it's going to be a lot tougher this year. I mean, they added. Well, Ed Glenn was supposed to be there tonight. Yeah, that got canceled. Uh, that's uh, traditionally a decent, uh, you know, program. Right. I mean, they, program. Right. Caston added Valley to their schedule. Right. I mean, they've added. Uh, yeah, they, I think they've added uh, some teams from from Howard County. I mean, they're, it, it, you know, they, they play they play North Miami. You know, the North Miami team will be really good. I mean, they're. It, it's a good competitive, tough schedule that they're going to play. Yeah, and they're yeah. going to have they're going to they're going to be well. You know, they they play West Central. I mean, who's we know they'll be a top ten team. I mean, they're yeah. they're almost they're pretty much as young as Caston is. Yeah. yeah. And you talk about Annika Smith, who's one of the outstanding players in the area from West Central. And they uh, have a, they have some freshmen that are coming up that uh, they're going to be pretty solid as well there mm -hmm. at West Central. Yeah. So. And then in the Hoosier North, I mean, Caston, Pioneer, Winnemac, I mean, all really good teams. Obviously, Pioneer is probably going to be the team that everybody's looking at, but. I mean, Pioneers got to be on if they want to every game if they want to win. I I think even even the the Stark County teams are getting a little bit better. I think you know Knox and North Judson have been kind of, eh, you know right. you'll just show up and win those games. I, I think they're getting better as well. And you know Triton with you know you know a new coach and Kennedy Crawl, but I think they've got some good athletes on that team. And uh, you know we'll see with Laville, but uh, I, you know Hoosier North is not going to be easy. Well, and you know, even with Culver, with uh, Bill Moyes, uh, you know, I think it's his second year now. Yeah. He's, he's going to get that team going, and and they, you know, they had a big win the other night against Argus uh, to open up their season. So. Right, you've got you know Lucy Overmeyer, who's a really good player. 
you know, they There's got a, a couple in that Overmeyer family that have been uh, nice softball players. Right, Megan Pearl. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got MJ in the circle. You know, and again, giving you that left-handed look, which is yeah. again sometimes it's tough for people for people to adjust. Right. Yeah, coming at you a little different spin. And yeah. And from the other side. Um, you know, you mentioned Tippecanoe Valley being on Casson's schedule. Coach Mathias, uh, you know, we just raved about her last year in, in year number two slash number one. Uh, yeah. You know, that was a young team last year, and you got to think that uh, those girls are just going to improve uh, tremendously again this year. Right. And, you know, they've got several different options in the circle, but Corinna Styles, I think, is their ace. Yeah. I think Corinna is just somebody who can just work the ball inside and outside and just hit her spots. And then combine that with the velocity, and then you've got a really great shortstop and Braden Bainey defense. You know, defensively they're so strong up the middle. When you talk about Braden Bainey at shortstop, Macy Kirkenstein in center field, and then Molly Moriarty in center field. Macy Kirkenstein at second base, and then Molly Moriarty in center field, mm-hmm. and then the other Maddie Smith is their catcher. Mm-hmm. So that's that defense up the middle. You can see that they emphasize that, and then you've got a you know a senior first baseman in Mercedes Snap who's played that position a lot. So. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a strong team. They won their opener against Northwood 2-1 to one in eight innings. I know people were like, gee, didn't we 10-run Northwood last year? They did, but Northwood's got a freshman pitcher who's really good, and I know yeah. really gave them fits. But, uh, you know, Valley was able to escape with a win in that game. So, uh, it, you know, offense I think was kind of the question mark last year. We'll see. Now that, you know, you know throwing a girl like Brittany Ben, who got a lot of clutch hits for them, but can they get those big hits against the best opponents on their schedule. Yeah. Should be fun. Uh, you know, just their aggressiveness on the on the base pass, too, last year was, was fun to watch. Yeah. I, I really like the way they, uh, you know, they pushed the limits a little bit. Sometimes you get bit by it, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they, they were able to uh, force the issue a little bit, too. Yeah, and uh, having said, yeah, but having said that, they scored more runs. They score more runs, and not only that, but defensively, is I think another area of the game where Valley was much improved last oh, yeah. year. Yeah, that was a first. In, 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 it was interesting because that was in a. I mean, that was a that was a first year that had been kind of two years in the making. Because yeah. Coach yeah. Watson, Coach Mathias, excuse me, Coach Mathias didn't have that first year in twenty twenty. Right, right. But yeah, if you look back to twenty nineteen, the last time they played before that, I mean, yeah, the the improvement. Yeah, just around the the whole field and offensively, defensively, it's just. And I, I think she's she's got a uh, a lot of energy, mm-hmm. young young coach like she is. I think she's got a lot of energy, and I, I think she's just going to really take that program to the next level. Right, I'm the TRC softball race is going to be very interesting. I mean, especially is Rochester as good as are they going to consistently keep hitting the ball like this? Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe not like this, but I think if if Rochester can consistently put just five six runs up on the board. They're going to be they're going to be a factor. You've got a veteran Valley team. You know Northfield again. They're used to winning. We're going to have to see who's going to be in the circle for them. Yeah, they, and, didn't, they didn't do too bad they, last year. They lose. Yeah, they won state. <laughs> they lose Addie Baker and they lose Hunter. But I, I'm sh- I'm not I'm not I'm not ready to say that I'm not ready to dismiss them yet. With what they did in basketball. Because I thought they would be like just mm-hmm. so far down because of who graduated. Yeah, I I'm not gonna put uh, I'm not gonna put anything past them that they they can't be uh, right there in the mix. But the team I'm looking at in the TRC is down in Denver, Indiana. I, mm-hmm. I you know I think with Coach Cooley and Coach Meeks there, and Lauren Duncan in the circle. I mean North Miami is gonna be that team that I think is, I mean they're gonna be right there as well and. Is she a junior or senior this year? I think she's a junior, and you yeah. do not underestimate North Miami ever. Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. one thing I've learned a lot. I mean, they, you know, they graduate some good kids, and then there's just, you know, again that Denver Youth League that they have. That feeder system is just mm-hmm. terrific, and it's just never underestimate North Miami. They're going to be right there. Yeah. Well, and then uh, you know, obviously Whitco with uh, with Gwynny Gar graduating, you got to wonder what they're going to do as far as pitching. But right uh, with with Coach Gar. You know, that's another team that you can't ever overlook. Yeah, right, exactly. So yeah, TRC softball is, is going to be one of those, you know, gauntlets again this year. Right, and that's TRC opener, April, Wednesday, April 20th, Rochester at Whitco. That's going to be a, an interesting game to see kind of who gets that first leg up on the competition. Yeah. Yeah, the winner of that one, uh, look out, because yeah. they're going to be uh, feeling pretty good. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Argus... Uh, 
I saw they, you know, obviously they lost 10-9 to uh, Culver. Uh, had, a, had a tough one. I don't know how John Adams ended up on their schedule. 4A school from South Bend, but... Uh, 20 to nothing in yeah, five innings, cool and tough. they yeah. scored 12 in the... South Bend Adams scored 12 in the first inning, and it yeah. didn't get much better after that, and Argus didn't have a hit. Uh, but Argus does have some kind of a mixture of veteran players, girls like Allison Zahm and Carly Miller, mm-hmm. and then some new kids like Liliana uh, Ellis, Ellison? Yeah, you got me on that one. And then... Uh, Stackhouse. Uh, Ava Stackhouse yeah. is a freshman. I think yeah. she's going to get quite a bit of varsity playing time as yeah. well. Yeah, she's, she's Ali- a good athlete. Alicia Sarver is another girl who's had some previous experience. Yeah. Had a lot of experience last year as a freshman. I think will will play a big role as a sophomore this year. Yeah. New field for the Dragons this year, so uh, that'll mm-hmm. be interesting. We'll have a game up there for them. They're going to be playing over at the uh, Argus Park. Mm-hmm. So uh, looking forward to... Uh, actually, technically, they were playing at the Argus Park before because mm-hmm. that... Uh, Diamond is is actually park property, but te- truthfully, they're on the park grounds now. Mm-hmm. So uh, and then you know, Win and Mac. I mean, Coach Belcher just puts out a quality team year after year. Uh, you know, I I really like their center fielder Maggie Smith. I mean, she's a really good defensive center fielder, and she's going to hold down that leadoff spot in the batting order. And then you've got Kaya Campbell, and you've got Ella Gearhart. Mm-hmm. You know, b- boy Emma Goodman is a girl we. We probably didn't talk about enough last year, but she's a terrific player as well. Yeah. And then uh, Perry. Kate? Uh, Katie graduated. This would be your younger sister. Okay. Can't remember her first name. but Yeah. And, and, and Alexis Sheets, too. I mean, Alexis yeah. is a very, very good shortstop, and she can also pitch a little bit if you need her to. Yeah. We're going to get a chance to see them on Tuesday, mm-hmm. as long as the weather holds out, which I think it will. Right. Off to, off to a one and two start, you know, lost at Morgan, you know, you lose at Morgan Township and at Hebron, but those those, those are, are good teams. teams. I mean, Hebr- Hebron is always good. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the Hebron game is maybe the more important game because that's a team you could see down the road. I know Hebron, you know, they have a sophomore pitcher who pitched a lot for them last year as a freshman. They're, they're always good. Yeah. All right, any other uh, softball notes here before we take a break? Uh, well, again, we just talked about softball for how long. We're, we're, pretty, we're pretty enthusiastic about this sport, yeah. and we're really really looking forward to an interesting season. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, that two-way sectional at Boone Grove is going to be really, really interesting. And you talk about, obviously, the home, the Wolves playing in their home, Lady Wolves playing in their home field. Oh, and then yeah. Pioneer coming there, Winnemac, Hebron, that is a loaded sectional. And they gave uh, they gave the Panthers everything that uh, they wanted and then some yeah. in that game last year. Mm-hmm. So, And then that, that two-way sectional at Wabash is going to be interesting too because, you know, Whitco won it last year, but they suffered some graduation losses. But like we said, never underestimate what Coach Gar and the program she puts out on the field at Whitco. Yeah, and I think you're going to see an improved Wabash team there as well. Rochester is going to be right in there, right there in that mix. I mean... And the team that people always seem to underestimate, another team that people seem to underestimate, but it's always pretty solid is Manchester. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I mean, we don't want to talk too much about sectionals already, but mm-hmm. uh, really looking forward to just getting some good oh, weather yeah. and getting some games. Yeah, we don't want to talk about sectionals, but that, the 1A <laughs> sectional in North Miami is crazy good. Yeah. That was, I think by any by any way you would measure it, it was the best sectional, the best 1A sectional in the state last year. Well, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but, you know, we talked about North Miami sectional and the Winnemac sectional last year, and we said those two winners were going to be tough outs, mm-hmm. both of them one state. Yeah. So that was uh, kind of something that uh, mm-hmm. worked out there. Yeah. So. We'll take a quick break here. We'll come back with Ducks and Baseball and Talking Sports with Val when we get back. The Winning Edge is your local provider for all your sport and school athletic needs. From providing customizable sportswear to engraving trophies, The Winning Edge strives to help teams find their edge on the playing field. Call 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. Welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val, and we're going to talk some baseball. Kind of played that commercial purposely there, Val, obviously. Uh, Winning Edge, not only a great sponsor of ours, but, uh, you know, Coach Corey Good of the Rochester Zebras, uh, you know, family part of that ownership of uh, the Winning Edge. And Rochester uh, got their uh, season off to a great start with a uh, win on the road against uh, Delphi, who's coming in ranked number eight. Ranked number six. Six. They moved up to six, yeah. 
So, the defending uh, regional champion. Yeah, they knocked Rochester out of the uh, tournament last year at uh, LCC. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then went on and beat a really good Wapahani team in the regional final that I don't think anybody was expecting. Right. Yeah, we didn't, mm-hmm. for sure. So, Before uh, losing to East Side in the semi-state, yeah. Yeah. So uh, a great start to the season. Obviously, they uh, were supposed to play tomorrow against Glenn. That uh, has been canceled as is. Much ten, everything else. As, ten, as well as tonight's game at Northwestern. Tonight's at Northwestern. Did they play at Laville? No, that game got postponed get, too. Because it was on, it was on, it was on, and then I saw that it. it uh, I think just before they were supposed to get on the bus, they can't. They, they postponed that one. It, so yeah, uh, they they were supposed to play five games this week. They wound up playing only one. Yeah. But I guess if you're going to play one, uh, you might as well get a win against number six, right? Right. And it was it was a very impressive performance. They won ten to three. Rochester had 14 hits in that game, and then six walks on top of that. And, you know, they, they, they showed, uh, you know, as Coach Corey Good talked about, well, I knew who I was going to put down in my batting order to those first three spots when you talk about Tarek McLaughlin, and Ethan Medina, and Evan Elliott. Mm-hmm. But it was four through nine that was kind of didn't know what to expect. Even he didn't know what to expect. He put in, but he put in the freshman Tanner Reinhardt's at third base and batted him cleanup. And... You know, Tanner just was great. I mean, he had three hits. He had a big two-run single that gave him a four-to-one lead. And, you know, Tanner's going to – he can handle the stick, as, oh, yeah. even as a freshman at this yeah. level. Yeah. Uh, that's not to be worried about. And then, you know, the other spots. Um, you know, Luke Hunting started the game at first base. He's going to be a solid defensive first base. But then he moved over to shortstop when Tarek McLaughlin went from shortstop to pitcher. So it's weird that you talk about a first guy who can play first base and shortstop. Not a lot of guys can play both, but right. look, look, look pretty solid out there. And then at second base, you know, Braden Zink. I don't think I had seen him play in the varsity field before. He kind of split time between JV and varsity in the past, but he looked really good at second base, and he looked good at the plate too. I think he got on. I think he had a hit in two walks. So that 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 that's going to be a great help. And then, you know, at the sixth spot in the batting order, you've got a sophomore catcher, and Jake, Jake Seifer is just a really good receiver uh, back there. I mean, he works really hard at it. I, I saw just just watching his pregame warm-up at catcher, that that would warp, that would wear me out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> or, um, and I mean, then he, I think he caught every pitch last year as a freshman. Yeah. He? I don't remember yeah. anybody else being behind the plate. Yeah, he's going to be good. And then, uh, you know, in left, left field, the, the kid who really impressed me too was Colton Faverda. I mean, Colton, you know, hit in the nine spot, but he had a big RBI double that gave him a two to one lead in the second inning. And it, again, we, you know, against a good team on the road, that you get production from the bottom half of your order, board, it just lifts the whole team up. Mm-hmm. And you know, Colton was just, you know, with Colton in left field and Medina in center field and Evan Elliott in right field, Rochester has a chance to have a really good defensive outfield. And I think that was maybe a little bit of a concern because when you graduate Kyle Reinerts and Quinn Stasiak, your center fielder and your left fielder, yeah, I mean. And- He's crazy you, good, too. Right. You never had to worry if a fly ball was hitting that direction. Right. And, I, and I think they're going to be pretty good defensively, too. Um, you know, what, what What Corey Good was talking about, Tanner Reinerts is pretty new to third base. He's he's obviously played a lot of baseball. He just hasn't played a lot of third base. Mm-hmm. So uh, that'll be kind of an adjustment period for him. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Tarek at shortstop, I mean, he's he's one of the best defensive shortstops in the area as well as a really good leadoff hitter. And you said he was pretty impressive too on on the mound in and, relief. And then he pitched three scoreless innings in relief yeah. and five strikeouts against a Delphi lineup that takes a lot of pride in getting their bat on the ball. And mm-hmm. you know, Tarek's a kid who he can he can just throw the ball by you, but he's also you could his breaking ball. He looked like he was a lot more confident in his breaking ball. He could throw it for strikes, or he could or he could get you to chase the, the breaking ball out of the zone. Tarek is not only is he such a good athlete, but he's so heady on top of it, mm-hmm. and he just he's never he's never like unsure of himself out there. He didn't have the greatest day at the plate; I think he only went one one for four, but he did have an RBI. I mean, he's just he knows his capabilities. He he's one of those guys. He he likes the pressure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, he he yeah. likes the pressure, and yeah. and that make that makes him such a unique kid, and. Uh, but I mean, in terms of stuff, I mean, he he's going to be the kid. I mean, I think there was, a, you know, he kind of pitched like one inning at a time. Would he be maybe be the closer? Terry's going to pitch a lot of big innings for this team. He's going to pitch more. He's going to pitch more innings for this team than he did uh, last year. He pitched the last three innings against Delphi. The guy who pitched the first four innings was Aaron Huffman. You know, Aaron had four Ks again against a, four Ks and four innings against the Delphi team that is always a good hitting team and is always just a pesky 
lineup. Aaron's going to be a very, very good pitcher at this level. I mean, I don't know if he has quite the velocity that Tarek has, but he throws plenty hard enough at this level. Yeah, it's you know it's got to be a good thing for for Coach Good. I mean, obviously when you when you graduate, uh, you know Reinerts and, and Beeler last year, who were your two oh, yeah. kind of, uh, stalwarts on the mound. You still got you still got a lot of options coming back right. here on the mound this year. Right. Look at a, if you can kind of look at a baseball season this way. A team typically plays about twenty five games. Mm-hmm. So twenty five times seven is one hundred and seventy five. So there's one hundred and seventy five innings you got to fill in a season. And then last year Rochester wound up playing about two hundred innings of baseball when you throw in three sectional games plus a regional game into yeah. the regular season. Yeah. So Rochester played 200 innings of baseball last year. Reiners and Beeler pitched 91 of the 200 innings. So that's, and then the other seniors pitched maybe about like 10 to 15 innings on top of that. So it's mm-hmm. how do you fill those innings? Right. And, right. and, and now you kind of have a good idea of who your one and your two are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see now who, who kind of fills out the rest of the staff moving forward. Yeah. You know, Braden Zink has gotten, you know, uh, uh, Corey Good said we've had, we had 12 different, we were running 12 different bullpens for kids during, yeah. while we were indoors. Yeah. Just giving everybody a chance to get some mound time and some, give them, just give them a chance to throw. Well, we yeah. see 12 different guys on the mound. I don't know. It's kind of hard to guess. But right. he seems to be pretty confident about eight of them. And he thinks everybody in that junior, in that junior class can pitch. Right. So we'll see which of those juniors step up. Obviously, Huffman and McLaughlin are juniors, but will there be any more juniors than that? Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, you look at, uh, like, a Tanner Reinhardt, I think he can pitch. Probably won't be maybe this mm-hmm. year, but... Braden uh, Zink can definitely pitch. Yeah, and, you know, you, you look at some, Ethan, some of the kids Ethan, that we Ethan, didn't... Ethan Medina can pitch. It's uh, just kind of, if he knows where the ball's going... Yeah. I mean, but boy, if you can have a good lefty like that in Medina, I mean that that can give you another weapon out there. Right, right. And then you got kids like Xavier Vance, who, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know how much with all the kids in front of him. I don't know as a freshman, but he's a he's a stud as well. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they're just kind of coming out of the the woodwork here with the uh, you know you just got the one senior with Evan Elliott. Yeah. I mean, just a young young team for uh, Coach Good. Yeah. What impre- talent. Yeah, another thing that impressed me is that Delphi tried to squ- they tried to get a guy to score all the way from second on a squeezed bunt in the first inning, and and Rochester nipped that in the bud. They got the kid to run down and tagged him out. That's a sign that I mean, that's a sign that your head's in the game and you're 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 thinking the game pretty well. And these mm-hmm. kids, uh, th- that's a good sign. The first inning of the season when somebody tries to maybe I don't know trick you is, but uh, you know try to be really aggressive on the base paths and you're ready for it. I mean that's yeah. a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, and these kids, you know, we've seen them play since, you know, they were just little things, mm-hmm. you know, playing t-ball. I mean, it's 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 a really good youth league program that uh, yeah. they've come up through, and, and you can really tell it's paying off. And, right. You know, what can Coach Good do coming off of his first uh, sectional championship as a coach, you know? Mm-hmm. Looks like it's starting off pretty well for him. Right, and I think that's going to be an interesting TRC. I mean, we know Southwood won it last year, and Southwood they were ranked. Southwood won their sectional as well, and mm-hmm. Southwood was ranked number one in Class One A for most of the year. They've got the best player in the conference coming back, Mo Lloyd. He's only a junior. Mm-hmm. Mo's a big time catcher. I think if he again, I don't know who's who's a Division One prospect and who isn't, but if Mo isn't, then I'd be shocked. Yeah. Uh, but then who do they have around Mo? Because mm-hmm. uh, you know they graduated the Rich Twins, who pitched a lot of innings for them. Right. Uh, they're they're going to be. Uh, the, the the I'm not worried about Southwest. You know they've got Weiner, they've got Mo. They they'll be a good. They'll hit. You know the Southwood always seems to be hit. Mm-hmm. It's how will they get outs? Yeah, yeah. But uh, that'll be interesting. But can can a team like Rochester challenge them? Mm-hmm. Can a veteran? You know, can you know? Can some of these other teams challenge them? Well, while we're talking, because uh, uh, I, I don't think they're. There aren't many just easy wins where you just show up and win a TRC baseball game. Yeah, you well, gotta you gotta earn it. Yeah, and talking about earning and talking about a good TRC team that uh, just pitches lights out. That's our uh, Valley Vikings. Right. I mean, uh, where where are they gonna get the runs at is probably the biggest question for mm-hmm. them. But pitching shouldn't be an issue for them. At right. All. I mean, as good as Huffman and McLaughlin is the best pitcher in our area is Owen Kirkenstein from Valley. I mean, Owen is a senior. He's been on the mound a lot in his life. He's you know, he, he's a guy who can, to me, he's just one of those kids where if plan A isn't working, you can go to plan B and get you out that way too. Mm-hmm. And this is just a team that's, uh, 
and, and, you know, on, on top of that, when you have a kid like Anakin Pettit behind the plate, I mean, who's working with Owen, and they just have, you can just tell they have a good chemistry out there, and Anakin's played a lot of baseball, and he just loves it. And so that, that, that battery is kind of where it all starts. But then you've got some other veteran kids, uh, you know, kids like Damian Kohler, uh, you know, just just a lot of good players on this on that Valley team, but again, the question is, you know, can they be able to put up numbers against some of the better teams in our area? We were hoping to see them play last week, but they had they had a game at John Glenn that got postponed and a game at Fairfield, and we were really hoping they'd get at least one of those games in. Unfortunately, right. they didn't get either one in, and now we're kind of stuck waiting them for them. To, then they went on spring break, so we're kind of waiting for them to start their season Monday against Triton. Uh, Valley should be heavily favored in that one, but we'll see. Their schedule will get a lot tougher after that. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen that Fairfield one. You know, talking about those kids from Rochester that I watched in Town and Country a few years ago, the the Fairfield program uh, a few years ago in, in Town and Country was just tremendous and mm-hmm. really looking uh, to see what those kids can do as they move into high school. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's always a, a, a tough program up there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be really interesting. And, you know, how, how do they, uh, you know, obviously they – coming back from the the tragedy that they they went through and right i mean that it right i mean you know we, we went to their picture day and you know they all held up you know they all lined up and then they held up brendan stump's uniform that uniform number four you know he's still with them and mm. and and it's going to be um what he means to them and what he means to coach little john and that program yeah. uh, it's an enduring legacy yeah you know, we saw what they did coming back, you know, r- right after it happened last year with that win against Southwood. And, you know, hopefully they can c- continue to, to honor him and, and yeah. keep his memory alive by, you know, just being good. Yeah. Tough 3A sectional, though, when you talk about gym, the sectional's going to be at Jimtown. Again, Valley's 3A for baseball, 2A for softball, but the mm-hmm. 3A baseball sectional. They've got Jimtown, they've got Northwood. I mean, those two teams, yeah. those two teams have traditionally been good. Mm-hmm. But again, I. Owen Kirkenstein, I think, can handle himself against most anybody. Yeah, yeah. And another pesky team in that section is West Noble, who I think is always. Yeah. Th- seems it seems like they uh, always seem to be playing their best baseball right around, right around Memorial Day. You know, Valley. I mean, you feel bad because you know, just like football uh, and then basketball and then and baseball, they just have brutal sectionals mm-hmm. for all three of those. And you know, they they had the season they had in football, and then ended up, you know. Uh, getting knocked out by Marion, and mm-hmm. so it, it's tough. But I mean, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, and they they mm-hmm. definitely play them early in yeah. the tournament. Uh, what about our Hoosier North teams? Anything that uh, stands out for you, uh, Hoosier North? Well, guys? when you look at the cast and comments, you look at Joey Spin, who was our RTC Baseball Player of the Year last year. Uh, Joey and Cade Sider are just a great one-two combination on the mound for cast and. Uh, and then, but their number three is Pete Duvall as a sophomore. I mean, he, he'd be a lot of he'd be a lot of teams one and one or two. Um, th- this is a team, you know, they've got uh, a lot of. It just seems like they, just a lot of guys who played a lot of baseball. Who, uh, you know, they, you know, they, they had that rough. En- you know, they know how to play. They played a lot of baseball. They had the rough ending of the season last year when they lose to, you know, they lose two games to Laville. They go from first place to fifth in the conference and. To win a conference championship, I know it meant a lot to them in boys basketball. I think it, it might mean as much if they did that the same thing in baseball. And, and you talk about pitching; uh, it's even more important with the Hoosier North because they play, you know, the same opponent back to back. Right. So you, you really have to have some good pitching. Right. There's number one. Right. There's some two games there again. They play uh, 14 conference games. So you play everybody twice. There's some double conference double headers on Saturdays, but there are also some two game sets. So yeah, I mean, you you have to have a good number two pitcher if you want to win the Hoosier North title. Yeah, and that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, but again, with Cast and with with Joey Spin and Cade Zider, I'm really looking forward to see what Talon Zider does on the baseball field. It's interesting. Valley's got Cast has got a lot of good seniors and they've got a lot of good sophomores, but their junior there's just not a lot in the junior class. Mm-hmm. But they do have the one junior, Jackson Rentschler, who I think is going to be a ter- just a terrific player. He's going to have a terrific year. I mean, he. Yeah. He is a big time, and we talk about a left-handed bat. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of teams have a left-handed bat like Jackson Rentschler. Yeah, I know he is uh, into the baseball. I yeah, mean, you know when you talk when you talk Rentschler, uh, you talk softball, you talk baseball. I mean, mm-hmm. they're they're definitely uh, keyed up in uh, in those two sports. Yeah. So, 
uh, you know, I, I can remember back to, to Tori Rentschler when she was a, uh, a big softball player for Caston a few years ago. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. I think, uh, you know, d- and I think defensively they'll be a good team too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it could, uh, but as, again, it's a lot of good pitchers in the, in the, in the Hoosier North. And it can, be, can you scratch out those three to two, four to three time games? Right, and you talk about good pitching. You, you you really have to look at Pioneer with their number one with Braden Erickson, uh, but but then you know yeah. who's, who's their number? Yeah, two? if if Owen Kurgenstein is the best pitcher in the area, I think Braden might be number two. I mean, Braden is a big time hurler, but you know you look at that Tri County game; they lose fourteen to one in five innings, and Braden didn't pitch. And that, I mean, right. that game was basically over with early. It was twelve to one after two innings, and Pioneer really struggled to throw strikes in that game. Mm-hmm. You know, the Oscar Solano has seen a little bit of mound time. Caden Couch has seen a little bit of mound time. But who can kind of nail down that number two spot? Because again, like we said in the Hoosier North, you got to have a good number two pitcher if you want right. to have a ch- chance to repeat in the conference. You know, Pioneer loses a kid like Hunter Kleppinger to graduation; he's gonna be missed. Yeah. Uh, well, we, maybe Caleb Sweet might see some mound time as well. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see them next week. They're going to be in Rochester at Bob Copeland Field on Thursday. So. You remember the the game last year at uh, with Rochester? Going How could down. I forget? Yeah. yeah. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that one will be just as exciting. But um, Rochester hit nine homers as a team last year. I think they had five in that game. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. I, I think there was was there six or seven altogether that were hit in that game. I think uh, Pioneer might have had two. Yeah, there on, were on there top. were there were four grand slams hit in that game. Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. just a just a crazy game and. Looked like it was wrapped up, and you know it, it, it mm-hmm. almost wasn't. And so that was that was a fun one. We'll see them here at uh, Rochester this right. year on uh, on Thursday next week. Right. Uh, obviously, the programs at Argus and Culver are still maybe a little bit in rebuilding mode. I mean, uh, the Argus gave Coutts a really competitive game the other night. It lost twelve to nine. Um, you know, uh, Coach Kindig, uh, mm-hmm. you know, back for his second stint as as coach. And actually, I don't know, was there really a coach in between it was kind of weird uh, he was the coach and then he wasn't and then he was and but and there was the, there was COVID and then he had some health issues and he couldn't coach the team yeah yeah so they, I don't know that there was really any games that were coached by anybody but Joe Kindig mm-hmm. but uh, he had a little stint of taking right. some time off but. and when you talk about Dylan Kindig I think he's going to be you know pretty tough on the mound but yeah. again with Argus it's kind of bu- building those arms yeah as you build a program I think that's going to be key well, you know the struggle in Argus, obviously, is everybody wants to play soccer, mm-hmm. <laughs> even in the spring. So it's it's a struggle to get the uh, the kids, you know, and uh, you know they, they've yeah. got some history. Obviously, mm-hmm. if, you, if you go back, uh, you know, fifteen twenty years ago, uh, you know, there's there's some history there with Argus, but uh, it's been a little bit of a struggle for the last few years. Another senior I'm looking forward to seeing play is Caden Brady. Yeah, I think he could be a big factor on that team as well, as along with Dylan. Yeah. Uh, the other team that I'm kind of interested to see how they do this year is the Winnemac Warriors. Obviously, a lot of seniors in that uh, Winnemac class. Nine yeah. seniors, nine seniors and two sophomores, and you know they've they, they've got. I mean, they've again, it's a pretty. I mean, the guys have played a lot of baseball together. I mean, when you talk about Hayden Clark, you don't have to worry about center field. When you talk about Pearson, you don't have to worry about you know your left-handed ace. When you talk about Dylan Brown, you don't have to worry about a third baseman. So it's you know now they. They went out yesterday. They lose their season opener, eleven to one. They were a really good Carroll team. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, that's a Carroll team that's ranked number eight in Class Two. And if anything, that's too low. I think yeah. Carroll might be a top five team. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Winnemac only had one hit in that game, but they faced two really good pitchers in Eldridge and Turnpaw. Carroll, Carroll used them both. They used, I think, Eldridge for the first four innings and Turnpaw for the last three. So, but I mean, that 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 will certainly help you get ready for Hoosier North season. Right. Right. Uh, but I, I, there's no lack of arms there. There's there's no lack of experience there. And even those two sophomores, uh, I mean, they're going to be they're going to be really helpful. We talk about a kid like Wyatt Wheeler. I mean, they're you know it, it's a pretty good you know it's, it's going to be a good competitive team. They they tied for the T for the Hoosier North last year. But you know they 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 need they need that tough competition to get them ready for that sectional, which is just a bear of a sectional. When you talk about you know Boone Grove and Hebron every year are going to be really good, and North, you know, even North Newton has been kind of formidable in recent years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So to, that that schedule really does get them ready, and you need you need those tough games. Yeah. Well, we're really looking forward to uh, a some spring weather, so we can get some of these games in, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing what some of these teams can do. And 
Uh, we'll be talking, obviously, more baseball, softball, track, tennis, golf, all that stuff on uh, upcoming episodes of Talking Sports with Val. Again, if you weren't here at the beginning, uh, pretty much everything that was going on tomorrow is canceled. I don't know of anything. Do you know of anything that's still going on? Uh, everything was canceled. We'll, we'll double check, but check my Twitter account, at Val T Sports, if you... Yeah, I think... Well, you know, we were going to be at uh, Fansler with the Rochester Zebras hosting Carroll and Pioneer. That's been canceled. The golf has been canceled. The doubleheader boys baseball game has been canceled. The cast and girls softball game against Glenn tonight has been canceled. Mm-hmm. So, and, um, and and tomorrow against Oak Hill. Yeah. So, uh, what we're looking at is uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, we'll be at Fansler on Tuesday. The Rochester Zebras hosting the Winnemac Warriors. It should be a good non-conference battle. Uh, you know, Rochester and Winnemac softball, uh, they have a lot of things in common. They play together a lot uh, over the summer and stuff, and then they uh, they go at it pretty good when they get on the field. Yeah. So should, Yeah, you know, always a good, pretty, pretty good rivalry. Yeah, really good rivalry. So we're looking forward to that. And then, like we said, later in the week we'll have a couple of baseball games for you as long as the weather permitting uh, is, you know, what it should be. Uh, we'll have Pioneer coming to town on Thursday, and then we'll have the Academy coming into town on uh, Friday. Yeah. So it should, uh, be, uh, it should be a good week if we can get those games in. Yeah. So. And, you know, I mean, TRC softball and baseball season, again, starts Wednesday, April 20th. So, yeah. again, the teams really want to get in a few games because the, <laughs> right. the conference season will be right there ready yeah. to go. Yeah. And you, you need to be ready to go, you know, because the conference season always seems, now that there are 10 teams in the TRC, it just seems to be happening earlier and earlier. Yeah, it's going to come at you hard and fast, yeah. and uh, you better be ready for mm-hmm. it. So, well, we will be back next week, obviously, with those games. We'll be back next Friday for more Talking Sports with Val. Thanks for tuning in today.